Good afternoon everyone, this is Dan here with Grapevine Recording and welcome back to our Quick Tips series where we are going to be looking at 31 tips throughout the month of January to start the year off correctly. Um, in this one, we are going to be looking at a high-pass filter and you know how useful the effects of a high-pass filter can be on clearing up headroom in your mix and just kind of you know making everything a little bit cleaner. Um, I've got a, a guitar track here. And I've just opened the Q10 parametric EQ on it. And what the high pass filter does is, as it sounds, anything above your frequency, it lets through. Everything below it, it applies gain reduction. You know, it filters it all out to whatever the Q value is. Um, on this, we're going to just listen to the guitar track, which sounds like this. And if you think about it in the sense that, you know, when you capture something with a microphone, it's going to pick up loads of frequencies. You know, it picks up the sound of the room, the sound of the guitar amp, the sound of that the actual guitar makes. And all of that has different frequency content. And each frequency content has, like, different energies and things like that. What we want to do is we want to filter out the stuff that isn't useful to us. And more often than not, that is all of the low stuff you know all the really low frequency things and one thing to bear in mind is when we recorded this the whole band were in the one room and everything was getting recorded at the same time so when we play through and we listen to it we'll start to hear the bass come in just on the guitar track as you can see it is soloed you hear the bass you hear the drums and you know you just have a little listen So you can hear the bass coming in, you hear the kick drum, you hear the snares, you hear all of that, and that's not something that we want in there. Obviously, there's certain things that we can't do, it's just the nature of how we recorded this. Like, there's a lot of things we can't get rid of. But using this type of filtering, we can start to elim eliminate a lot of the bass without actually, you know, um, ruining any of the sound of the guitar. So we'll play it and I'll turn it in. And then I'll play it again with it out. So it kind of just gets rid of that bass element of it. It doesn't really affect the sound of the guitar that much, which is very useful to us because, of course, you know, we need to think of this in terms of the entire mix. And, you know, the bass is going to be heard anyway because of the bass track. So we don't need it on the rhythm guitar track as well. We can do this on vocals and things like that just to remove all of the really low frequencies. You know, if they touch the microphone, if there's um, wind, you know, just like just rumbles in the room, just things like that. We can get rid of all of that stuff, which gives us a lot of benefits, actually, Um Clears up headroom, of course, a lot of the low frequencies have a lot of energy. If we cut them out, none of that is going to the final mix bus. It's not keep it, it's not clogging up any of that headroom that we need. Uh, also, if we have any compressors after uh, after this EQ in the chain, then there's less things going to that compressor. So there's less things triggering that compressor. So it's a more accurate way to set up your compressors. We're going to go through that in a later video, so don't worry about that now. But... This is just a very quick video. Um, again, you can you'd have to adjust this just because if you go too high, it starts going really thin, as you will hear now. So there really is an art in getting that per well, not perfect, but you know the right frequency for your filter. Uh, it's kind of the only thing you can do it is just trust your ears, keep turning it in and out, and just you know judge whatever you think is better but have a go try it on your tracks see if it gives you any difference um this has been damn with grapevine recording and i'll see you tomorrow bye bye